it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Zoo Console Edition video. Welcome back to Eden Garden Zoological Park. In the last episode, we added some Nile monitors to the side of the reptile house, and then we finalised this entire build by adding the water feature with all the rocks and the foliage going around the entire building. Now, in this series so far, with the exception of the timber wolves and the saltwater crocodiles, we haven't really added many big animals to this zoo, have we? Today, we are going to rectify that, and we're going to put the biggest animal we have had in the zoo so far. We're going to put some elephants into the zoo, and I think I'm going to put these next to the reptile house. So, let's hop into the zoo, shall we? Right, so here we are back in the zoo once again. And in between episodes, I've made some big changes, starting to address some of the problems that we were starting to encounter in the zoo. But before we go and have a look at them, we'll swap that to the free camera mode and let's head over towards the reptile house. So you will notice the bridge is now done. And originally, I wanted to do something a little bit more grand than what I ended up with, but I thought about it. It just needed to be simple and effective. It didn't need to be too over the top. So using some of the wooden panels to just cover that bridge, and that was all it needed. And then as we come around, I've added some vines and some more foliage at the side of the building, because I think we can all agree the building looked way too clean and pristine the way it was. It needed to look a little bit more run down and decrepit, like it's been here for years. So by adding them vines at the side of the building, I think it really did give it that run down look and like worn, it's been here for a couple of years. And then as we come around the side, I've had to move the water pump and the wind generator because they were having negative effects on the guests. And then as we come through into the building itself, this was doing my absolute head in. The staff facilities kept having negative effect on the guests. So I ended up having to delete them, but I've left the facades there so it still looks like they're being used. The staff are now just gonna have to go over here and use these staff facilities over here, I'm afraid. Sorry guys, you've got a little bit of a walk, but you're gonna have to deal with it. I've also redone the entire pathing throughout the entire zoo. I deleted all of the roof tile pieces, deleted all of the path in the park, and redone the entire lot to try and combat the clipping issue that we were having with the guests' feet going through the flooring. And whilst it's now not perfect, it's a lot better than what it was. And I've also added a little bit more detailing around the path here by putting some stones and the foliage around here. And the peafowls really enjoy it. They actually climb up onto these rocks. They actually jump up onto this rock here and then just lay down there. It's really cool. Unfortunately, there's not one there right now. But when it rains, the peafowls come underneath these trees and use it as a shelter. Now, over here, I still need to touch this back up again with all of the new pathing that's been done in the roof tile pieces. We've got some protesters in the zoo. Oh, these, these Pereri dogs. So, somebody's going to have to let me know if you are experiencing the same problem with Pereri dogs. I don't know if this is a bug, but they keep going thirsty. They keep going hungry. There is food in there. There is water in there, but they won't eat they won't drink, and then I keep having protesters. It seems to fix itself over time. I'm not sure what the problem is. The traversable area is absolutely fine, so I've got no idea what's going on there. But the pathing, as you can see, is now a lot cleaner than what it used to be. I've used some wider pathing coming down. It's a lot tidier around here. It's a lot more accessible for the guests. And it did also reduce the percentage only by a little bit. It was only one or two percent, but it's nice to know that very much like Planet Coaster, the pathing is one of the big percentage killers. So using a gridded path or a wider path will actually help with that. We've got some guests in the park. So we've got Dada looking very flash in your jump red suit. You look like a Power Ranger. It's morphing time. And who else have we got? So we've got Krajak. Where are you going? You're going towards the chief beef. We need to put some more food in here. And then we've got Matty Vortex. Matty, what a cool name. I love that. Oh dear, it doesn't look like you're having a very nice time. Oh no. And then we've got Ricky Lad, who's also queuing for the chief beef. Yeah, we really do need to look at putting more food and drink in this zoo. 
we've got some more vet research done. So I think that is the last one, I believe. I think we're all done. We are. So Jonathan's just on the last one right now. So I think we can start looking at getting some advanced research done. And I'm not sure what the advanced research does at the moment. I've had in the campaign somebody doing advanced research for ages and it never seemed to do anything. So I need to have a read up on that and see what it actually does. We've got the East Asia theme done. So Leopoldo, you can go on. Let's do shelters and climbing, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Shelton climbing. There you go. Right. And I think we will do a welfare check before we get into today's build. So let's just have a very quick whip around all of the animals, see how they're all getting on. So let's try and click it first time. Yes. So, yeah, that welfare is really high. The warthogs are doing fantastic. And how many of you guys have we got now? So we have got six. So we've got the two albino ones. We've got quite a few outsiders. You're hungry, I'm not sure why. So let's make sure we get a keeper in here to get you fed. We've got plenty of money now. We're up to 71,000 now. So I think financially, we're in a very comfortable place in this zoo. I don't think we need to worry so much about the money anymore. We've got loads of conservation points, but I imagine we will spend a lot of them today getting the elephants and oh that welfare is low that is to do with the space isn't it mm, i wonder how many of these otters we have got right now the hard shelter is not enough either i wonder if we can maybe push that hard shelter down a little bit further do you think we could get that going back maybe under the ground underneath there something that we can maybe have a look at addressing because we do need to have a look at that but i think there's just maybe too many of them in here how many have we got now nine right okay i think we'll look at trading some of these out of the zoo in a moment we'll go around and we'll do a welfare check on all of the animals and then we'll have a look at trading some of these animals out there you go jonathan has finished the research well done jonathan he is the goat jonathan is my mvp right you can go on the advanced research now there you go he is my research dude so there you go jonathan and how are we doing in the wolf enclosure so they've just been fed I love the animations of the wolves. I love seeing them jump over the rocks and interacting with all of the things in here. Their welfare is really high. That's fantastic to see. And we've got six of them right now. So that's not too bad. Let's go and have a look at the crocs. So where are they? Oh, I can't find any. Um, Hello. Oh, there's one over there. Look, they've just been fed. So I assume... This one must be coming to get some food. So we've got Bakti. That is the male. And we've only got two crocs left. And I believe we've only had two crocs for a while. They're not breeding. And that must be because the female is an outsider. The male's hungry, but the food is there. So he's on the way there. The female's an outsider. So I wonder if that's why they're not breeding. I might have to look at getting another female put inside this enclosure. And then finally, let's have a look at the prairie dogs. I say finally, we've still got the caimans and the Nile monitor to have a look at. You guys, I think, are all right now. Your social's also quite low. That might be to do with the space and how many we've got. Let's have a quick look. So we've got 11 of them at the moment. So we'll also look at trading some of these out. These guys must have eaten and drank. Now, a couple of them are hungry, but the food is there. So hopefully they'll go and eat. I haven't encountered this problem with any other animal in the game so far where they won't eat and drink. I did see a comment on one of the past videos saying that somebody else was having this problem. So Frontier, if you're watching, can we please get a patch for the prairie dogs to get them eating and drinking, please? The Nile monitors are doing fantastic, aren't they? We've only got three of them at the moment. And you are hungry. That was the one we were just looking at, wasn't it? Yeah. So I think there's food there. So yeah, go and get something to eat. And then finally, let's have a quick look at the caimans, which I think are bred again. I forgot to turn off the breeding. Oh, look at that social. That's all to do with the space, isn't it? Mm, they they must have bred again because I think seven of them is fine. So how many have we got now? That won't click there. Can we click the floor there? 
No, that won't work. If we click on the glass, that should be able to do it. Let's click on there. Oh, th 13. Oh my days. These guys have such big litters. Would it be a litter? I don't know what you would call it. A big batch, <laughs> a big batch of new ones. They have like five or six at a time. So we really do need to look at training some of them out or at least stopping them breeding for now. It's nice to see that all of the exhibit animals are all gold. That is fantastic. Right, the otters. Let's have a look at trading some of these out, shall we? So that one, I think, will be a good one because it hasn't got a bronze or silver or even gold. Got nothing on the appeal. So let's get rid of that one. I think we'll have a look at getting rid of that one as well because it's about to go elderly anyway. And shall we get rid of another one, do we think? think i think maybe looking at getting rid of three maybe yeah i think three let's give it a three for now so that's a another 150 conservation points right so that should be them sorted we need to look at getting rid of some of these prairie dogs so we'll try and get rid of the ones that are about to go elderly before they end up dying we'll give them a little bit of freedom just before they pop their clogs. So they can go into the wild. Hey, we'll get rid of that one as well, I think, because why not? And we've got a couple of duplicate names there as well, Look, That's a bit strange. Uh, let's get rid of three, I think, maybe four. I think we'll get rid of that one because it's about to go elderly. Yeah, I think them four or five. Yeah, let's get rid of five of them. That should help that. And I don't like how it goes back to the top here because I'm then having to scroll all the way back down. Once we end up with maybe a couple of hundred animals in the zoo, that's going to get very frustrating having to go right back to the top and then scroll all the way back down. So that would be a nice quality of life fix frontier. If you're watching, once you've gone and traded or released to the wild to then come back to where you were before. So yeah, all of these exhibit animals are all gold, aren't they? From what I'm seeing, I think we might need a couple of more males and females in various enclosures just to continue the breeding. I can see a couple of places where we've got only males or we've got only females. So we'll have a look at that. What is wrong with you guys? The cleanliness. Right, we need to get a keeper on this. So request a keeper. Come on, chop, chop. We've got two. I'm sure we've got two keepers that work solely in this reptile house. So there's no excuse. I just want to... We'll have a check on that in a second. Yeah, we will have a check on that in a second. So the the iguanas as well, look. Is that the cleanliness as well? It must be. Let's have a quick look. Oh, it shot me over there. Right. Uh, uh, there we go. Right. And what's wrong with you guys? Is it the same problem and the cleanliness? It must be. Yeah, right, so keep it called urgently. We'll unpause the game for a moment so the keepers can come and clean them. And let's have a look back in here again. So everyone besides them looks okay at the moment. They're not doing too bad. So how are the peafowls doing? I think we'll look at trading the elderly ones out. So we'll get rid of that one. Unfortunately, they're gold, but they haven't got long left anyway. So let's just trade them out. Let's get some points for trading them. So shall we do four, five? I think we'll get rid of them five. Oh, mm, no. Mm, just four. Let's get rid of just the four. There we go. It's a shame they're all gold, but they were all old anyway, so no problem. And that should sort the peafowls out. So we've only got three now, so let's make sure that they are breeding once again, just so we can get some more back in. We've got the Nile monitors, they are fine. Yeah, we don't need to look at trading any of them out. The Crocs, we'll look at buying another one of them. Right, the Caymans, we need to stop all of these guys breeding, don't we? We might even just get rid of one or two of them as well, I think. Maybe the older ones? So if we get rid of that elderly female i think we'll put them all on contraceptives to stop them from breeding and then i think we might possibly just get rid of the two older ones i think so we've got a 21 year old there let's get rid of you and let's also look at getting rid of the elderly female yeah let's get rid of the rid of them two takes down to 11 still not ideal 
And we can only trade them. We can't release them to the wild. But a little bit of money. That's not too bad. Right. And the wolves. I think the wolves are okay. I think they'll be absolutely fine. I don't think we need to do anything with them at the moment. Mm. Might as well just get rid of that one with it being elderly. Same, yeah. I think just get rid of them too. They're both elderly, so let's just release them to the wild. And right back to the top again. Yeah, this is quite frustrating, having to continuously just keep scrolling all the way down. And the two snakes at the bottom are absolutely fine. Right, so... Next thing, let's make sure that all of the animals are on grade three food. They should all be except for the Nile monitors. Yep, so let's swap that to grade three. So everyone is on the best quality food that we've got. The research, we know what's going on there. Let's have a quick look at the education again. So the wolves are still the top and then the crocodiles and then the peafowls are now third. So before we had no peafowl education whatsoever and now they are the third most educated animals so yeah the education's going really well every single animal in the zoo has got three and they are all got some education on the go and let's have a look oh do i even want to look here oh look at all the death oh no we've had so much death in the zoo and in the exhibit animals exactly the same so many animals have died but saying that, we have done this zoo for a long time. We're a long time into this series. We're in year 49. So that would explain that. And where is this keeper? Come on, chop, chop. Hurry up and come and clean this. I'm sure we have got two here. There's one there. So we've got Brian. Brian! And we've also got Russell. So yeah, two people. Oh, he's he needs a little bit of training. So we've got two keepers just for the reptiles alone. So absolutely no excuse whatsoever. Come on, guys. Get a move on. I'm paying you the big bucks here. And let's just train up all the vendors while we're there. And all the other staff are mostly level five. So we're not doing too bad there at all. And oh, the timber wolf is about to inbreed. So let's get on that quickly. We don't want any inbreeding, so let's just trade you out of the zoo. And I think I just saw the keeper approaching the iguanas just as the pop-up just came up there. So let's just go back. Yeah, the keeper has now done that. That should be now sorted. Yep, yeah, back up to 100%. So we got the... It's the healer monsters. So it's actually pronounced with a H and not a G. So thank you ever so much to the people who commented telling me how to pronounce that. Healer monster. I would have never got that in a month of Mondays. But there you go. The keeper is now sorting that. Right. So, with all of that now done, that's taken so long. We're like, what, 20 minutes into this episode already and we haven't even started building yet. But now we've done all of that. We've done all the busy work. We can start on these elephants. So, yeah, I'm just making sure that I hadn't messed up the path by deleting that. But no, we hadn't. We're fine. We'll swap the path to a 10 meter width, I think. And let's start that around here. I think we're going to need to adjust where we are planning on putting the lemurs and the chimpanzees and that gorilla. We can always move them around. It was only a, ever a rough template. It was never set in stone where things were going. So we can always adjust that in a moment. And let's bring the path around here. We'll have it connect up there. And then we'll also put a alternate path. So if you're coming out of the reptile house, you'll be able to just turn left. But if you didn't want to go towards the reptile house, then you can also use this path right here to go straight up to the elephants. So we'll pop that there. I think maybe we'll just put something in the middle, maybe some planters or something. We can even, maybe even look at maybe putting some tortoises in there potentially i don't know i don't know if that's enough room we can have a look at that later on that's a tomorrow problem so let's just group all of them together and we'll move them just up there out the way for now and i think we'll delete this tree let's get rid of that and we know elephants are going there so we'll delete that also and i think we can extend this path a little bit more let's make sure the angle snap is turned on so that's nice and straight keeping it at the 10 meter width and right the staff path am i going to be able to work this all the way around the outside like i wanted to 
I don't think we are. I think we've... Yeah, we've kind of like come to a bit of a dead end there, haven't we? Dead end. Dead end. Uh, am I the only person that ever thinks that every time I say dead end? And you start going dead end. Dead end. Dead end. Dead end. No. My dad always used to do that. Such a dad joke to do. I think we're going to have to put a new staff path coming up here. So we'll still keep it off the beaten path. <laughs> no pun intended. The beaten path, so to speak. And we'll have a new backstage area coming up here. And I think we can copy all of the facilities that are by the main entrance. And we'll put an entire new area up here. We'll create this as a new work zone. And we'll put all of the staff facilities all up there. So the staff room, the trade center, we'll do everything. We'll, we'll copy that building, put it up there, get some new staff, put this as a work zone. And let's have a look at the elephants. So... I looked at the Indian elephants because originally I was going to put the Indian elephants in but I did change my mind after doing this and I decided to then put the African elephants in. I want more of an African theme up here and the size of the enclosure that we're going to end up doing today is going to be absolutely massive and the African elephants required more than the Indian ones did anyway. So we'll go with the African elephants but yeah, as you can see, they, they need so much room. So much room. We've already got some enrichment items unlocked, which is fantastic. They do have an enrichments bonus, but the tapirs are going to be going over the other side of the zoo with the capybaras later on. But with all of that now done, I think we can start looking at getting this done. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the ground here. So using our trusty terrain tool once again, we're going to drop that by about 8 metres, I think. And then by holding X, you can do a straight line coming all the way down here. And then the actual elephant enclosure itself, I don't want this on the same level as the guest. So we're going to drop that by about 4 metres and then we're going to level all of this out coming around here. And now, using these limestone wall pieces, we're going to block off this entire hole and cover all of that up to make it look a lot more visually pleasing than what it does right now. Right now, it's just a giant hole. It looks terrible. So we're going to hide all of that. With the first one now all done, we're going to select the entire thing and then copy it coming all the way down. As you can see, it's not straight right now, so we're going to need to turn that a little bit just to get it going. It's a little bit finicky. It took a couple of attempts to do this. The pathing I originally placed was only ever a template and it was never going to stay there permanently. So I'm going to delete all of that and then level the terrain out just here to make my life a little bit easier. And with this now down, it's just a question of going around the entire border and pushing all of that terrain back so it doesn't clip through the limestone wall pieces. Like with all the other enclosures in the zoo so far, I'm just going round the entire area using the roughen feature. As I love doing this as it gives the enclosures all that different elevation change and dynamicness. Dynamicness. Is that weird? 
I don't think so. I think I've just made up a word. You can all use that yourselves now. Dynamicness when you're using the Ruffin feature. But that's what I'm doing anyway. With the dynamicness now done, it's now time to put in the water feature. So just dropping the terrain a little bit, this is gonna be the rough template where I'm going to put the water. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover up the entire thing once again using the limestone wall pieces. With this being the first time I've attempted to do this, this didn't come easy. And as you will see throughout this in time lapse, you will see me adjusting it a lot, moving it all around, adjusting the terrain, using the smoothing feature. It took a lot of messing about to try and get this exactly how I wanted it. But with the rough outline now done, we can start getting the slope coming down where the elephants will be able to access the water. With the foundation now all in place, it's just a question of going around and ensuring that this appears watertight. So using these limestone wall pieces, we'll go around the entire outside, boxing all of that in, and then we'll push back any terrain that is sticking through the sides. With this build, it's gonna be extremely important to think of the realism. So by adding these vents going around the outside, we need to think about how this water can be drained and cleaned and treated properly. So with the drains now placed inside the water, we're also going to go all the way around the outside, around the outside, just like two trailer park girls, around the outside of the entire thing, placing all of these down. I think it's time that we start thinking about putting these elephants into this enclosure. So using the invisible walls, we're gonna come just down here and then we're gonna swap it to the concrete walls. The concrete walls are only placed there temporarily and I will be swapping all that in the next episode. I just wanted the rough outline so we can get the elephants in. We're gonna copy this entire building, make it into a blueprint because unfortunately, I can't just copy and paste it over. So we're gonna to have to select the entire building, make it into a blueprint and then put it over the other side.
Finally, with all of our new staff hired, we're going to assign them to this work area, so they're just going to have the elephants for now. But of course, these will be extended to other exhibits further down the line. And for building, I think we can call that it for the day. Let's get these elephants in, shall we? So we've got the African Savannah Elephant. Let's say if we had four and two babies, that's the, that, that was the wrong button, Matty. That, that was the wrong button. How did I end up there? Right, okay. Take two. So, African Savannah Elephants. And let's try that again, shall we? So, four and two. Look at the land requirement that they need. That is absolutely insane. It's a good job we've just done a 10,000 square meter enclosure, isn't it? Of course, that will shrink when we start decorating it tomorrow. And three of them are all conservation points. It really is a good job we saved them all up because I'm going to spend the entire lot and get all four of them. So let's pop all four into the enclosure. Oh, I'm excited for this. Oh, I am so excited. Right, we've got the first one incoming. Come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I want to see it. Here it comes. How does that great big elephant fit into that tiny little box? It's like five tons right there. Oh, look at him. Oh, hey, look at her. She is, oh, she is beautiful. Welfare 50%, so that's not too bad. That is not too bad. Let's have a look at their traversable area. Yep, yeah, brilliant. They can't escape anywhere. So they're going to need a hard shelter. They need the terrain sorting. We'll have a look at that in a moment. That will be the first thing that we address. Where are all of the others? We've got an inbreeding peafowl right here. Right, get out. There you go. Bye. So, right, let's come back to the elephants. Where are all the others? That's why I put the building there, so they didn't have to run across the entire zoo. We've got a keeper right there. Where are all the others coming from? Have they all come from right over the other side of the zoo or something? Yeah, they have. I can just see him running up the path right now. <sighs> Honestly, right. Oh, she is beautiful. She is absolutely stunning. Let's have a look at this second one that's about to come in. So we've got four of them on the way. And here we go. I think that one's even bigger. Is this one of the males? It is indeed right i think we need to look at doing this terrain as we wait for the others so let's get that done shall we that terrain actually took me ages to do it was so fiddly just trying to get that right but right we've got all four elephants in their welfare's gone up a little bit they need the hard shelter we'll do that in the next episode along with the foliage but we will put some enrichment items in for them straight away so we've got this large football we'll place that just there and what else can we put down i think we'll put i think we'll put more than one food trough down i think we may even put like three of them down so let's just pop all three of them around there let's give them lots of options to get their food we've got this giant scratching post i think we'll put that towards the back of the exhibit just for now and we've also got the sprinkler so we'll put that down so it's helped the enrichment a little bit but not massively there's still a lot more to do there we can also add this mud bath we'll pop that down so up to 50 percent so jonathan we need you researching please We'll get Jonathan on that. So, how are you guys doing now? Welfare, 71%. That's not too bad at all. The hard shelter will really help that. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. The social is really good. So, right. Jonathan, can you start researching, please? So, get off that advanced research. And let's get him onto the Savannah Elephants. And we'll get Hung. I love that name back onto the timber wolves once again right so hopefully they will start getting some more enrichment items quite quickly we haven't got the path here so we need to address that let's get the path coming all the way down parallel to this so we'll pop it back up to 10 meters again and we'll run this all the way along the side here there's no fencing at the moment we'll also do that in the next episode also we've got a lot to do in the next episode it's mostly going to be just decorating this entire enclosure making it all nice so let's get that all connected right there there you go you can come around and see the elef elephants 
Oh, I love them so much. They are amazing. By far the biggest animal that we have in the zoo right now. That welfare is not too bad at all. I'm really happy with how the water feature came out. I'm just so excited. I'm so pleased to have these giant animals in the zoo. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love them so much. And I'm so excited to get this decorated in the next episode. But let me know what you all think down below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. I'm going to be back in a couple of days where we will get this all finished off. So I will see you all then. Until then, take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and see you all in a couple of days. Bye, everybody.